This lesson is about auxiliary views. Instead of having a side view, we have a projected view based on an angled or tapered side. So let's start a brand new drawing and use the ACAD DWT template. And then I'll go ahead and turn off my grid. And for now, I'm only using the fifth and the sixth icon polar tracking and object snap. But if you are comfortable with and would like to use other tools like ortho or dynamic input, then it's your choice. We are going to be using polar tracking later on. I'll go ahead and pick the layer properties and I'll pick new layer and type in construction, press enter twice and create another layer called objects and enter twice for a layer called hidden and one called dimensions. And now for the hidden layer we can change the line type to hidden so we'll click on continuous pick the load button highlight here hidden and pick OK and then highlight hidden here and pick OK so that our layer will change to hidden. And now the objects layer is going to have a line weight that is different than the, the default 0.25. So let's go ahead and click on default for the objects layer. The book makes this 0.3. It works with 0.3. Go ahead and pick a OK for that objects layer. And I'll make the objects layer blue. You can ch choose your own colors if you'd like and the hidden layer I'll make that red just to see the difference in the layers and double click on the small sheet of paper to the left of construction to make that the current layer and then close out of the layer properties palette okay we are drawing a rectangle and so there are several different ways of drawing a rectangle I'm just going to go ahead and start the rectangle command. Pick a corner here. You could type in here at 3 comma 2.25 or you can right click and pick dimensions or type in D and pick dimensions and then for the length of the rectangle we're going to say type in 3 and enter and then type in 2.25 and enter and then click in which direction you want it to go in. So whatever way you're comfortable with creating a rectangle. And now we're going to copy the rectangle up 0.75. So I'll select copy, select here your rectangle, enter it, pick the bottom right corner of the rectangle you just drew, pull your mouse straight up and type in 0.75 and enter. And then you can go ahead and enter again to finish the copy command. And now that new rectangle we're going to rotate. We can pick rotate, select that second rectangle, enter it, pick here the bottom corner and type in 30 and enter. Now we're creating a third rectangle that's up here but we want it to be aligned with this left edge of the original rectangle. So when we start the rectangle command, let's do that, start rectangle, just rest your pointer on this corner, this top left corner, and you'll leave what's called a little alignment point. Pull your mouse straight up and you'll see extension. So you're really tracking from that object snap, that corner, and you're gonna go up and then just click here somewhere. Now for this rectangle, which is actually the same rectangle, you might draw it a little different and type in at, which is actually shift two, three, comma, two, and enter. So the bottom rectangle will represent the front view and the this new rectangle is going to represent the top view. So now instead of having a side view, 
the lesson is about auxiliary views. The view that's this angled piece on the 3D object, take a look at the at the worksheet, you'll see this tapered um, face. And so the first thing we'll do is set up some of the top view lines and then we'll establish our auxiliary view. So we need to explode. We'll use the explode command here to explode this rectangle. You can either select it and then pick explode or pick explode, select it and press enter. And then use the offset command to offset point 2. So start the offset command, type in point 2 and enter, pick the top line and pick below it, pick the bottom line and pick above it. And now we have another offset so we have to start the offset command again and offset 0.75 from that top line down and the bottom line here up. So let's take a look at drawing our front view. We can set the object layer current and just so that we can see the lines better in the status bar there is a tool called show hide line weight. It will display the line weight, but having it on and off won't affect the printing. If you have a lot of lines that are with a different line weight, then it will affect the drawing speed. Slow it down a little bit. So let's turn on a tool called Show Hide Line Weight, and it will show our bolder lines. Let's go ahead and start the line command and we're going to click here this corner pull our mouse over and click here and then pick here this intersection and come over here and click here now at this point they're asking us to set up an angle so that we can draw a line that's 30 degree increments you can actually right click with your pointer, rest it on polar tracking, and pick 30. The book also gives you an option of picking settings and going in and establishing it that way. So now when I pull my mouse here, this in this direction, I'll see that tracking vector. Your tracking vector tooltip might say 210 which is increments of 30. Let's go ahead and click here and here. And that will be part of our side view. Now we're going to copy this top view over, but we want this corner to line up with this edge. So let's start the copy command, put a box around everything in the top view, enter, left click the bottom left corner of that top view of the top view objects and then this is where we're going to use tracking again instead of clicking we're going to rest our pointer here at the corner of these angle lines and then as you pull your mouse away from that point you'll see the extension or the polar tracking pull your mouse out and click so that you know that that corner is going to line up with that edge. And then you can enter to finish the copy command. We'll also rotate this negative 60. So let's start the rotate command. Select those objects that you just copied and enter. And then left click here for the base point at the bottom left corner and then type in negative 60 and enter. Now we have that auxiliary view which is really the extension of this face. And we'll create this this V shape that's a part of the 3D object. We can start the line command and we'll draw the line from this original corner up to 
this intersection here. And then we're going to rotate that line 45 so that it's in place. So we'll start the rotate command, select this new line, enter, pick here for base point, and then type in 45 and enter. I'm going to mirror this line so we can start the mirror command. Select this line, enter it, pick the midpoint of this top line. If you don't have midpoint, in the status bar, you can right click on object snap if you need to pick up midpoint. So here, I'm going to start the mirror command, select the object, enter it, click here midpoint, come over here and click this midpoint, and then enter. And now I can use the trim command, start the trim command, select those two blue new lines as your cutting edges and enter, and then click these two out here. So now you have this V shape. We need to create a hidden line that will represent this kind of cutout. So we'll make the hidden line layer current, start the line command, click here at this corner, and then we need to have perpendicular here. So we'll hold our shift key down, press your right mouse button, and pick perpendicular. You can then know that that line is perpendicular here to this face. And because of that, we can then extend that line and click here when it hits this left edge. Right click and pick enter. So you've drawn two lines. We only need this one, but you can see that it lines up because that V cut is in the back. Let's go ahead and erase this one. So highlight the one, the first hidden line that you drew and erase it. We'll make the construction layer current. And then underneath the draw panel, you can click right on the word draw. There's a tool there called construction line. Go ahead and click on that. And then click here the top of this part in the front view. Pull your mouse up and click. Right click to end the command. And then let's start it again. So you can right click and pick repeat X line. This time we want to pick at the end of this hidden line. Pull your mouse up and click. Right click to end the command. And another construction line will be at the midpoint of this top view. I'll click here, pull my mouse over and click, and right click. Now we can make the object layer current, start the line command, and start to draw some of the lines that we know. We know that when we look down at the top, we're going to see this kind of V-shape cut back into the piece. We'll draw another line here and this represents the the bottom part of that cut. We also have a line that's here at the end and another one that comes all the way up to this top line but it's not the intersection of this construction line. It's more of the polar tracking so that you can create a line that's parallel to this one. And I'll go ahead and click and then pull my mouse back here and click. See, it's not the, the actual intersection of this construction line. I can pull my mouse down here and then we'll do this other line here. We can start the line command, click here, go to polar, polar, intersection, click here, 
pull your mouse back and click. Just for clarity, I'm going to go ahead and erase this construction line. Just that one. Because what we really need down here is to create another construction line that will create our front view at the end of this angled line and the top view. Instead of creating a construction line, you could start the line command and click here at this corner, pull your mouse down to the bottom and click, and then use grips to select that line, click at the end and stretch it, stretch it back to where it starts. Use your escape key to clear the grips. So it's up to you if you want to create a construction line and then draw the line or just draw the line and then trim or stretch it back to where it needs to um, start here. And we do need a few more construction lines here for the auxiliary view. So I'll make the construction layer current and go back to the construction tool that's under draw. We can now click at the end of this new line that we just created, pull our mouse over to 30 degrees and click. Right click to end the construction line, start the um, construction line command again and click here. Pull your mouse over and click, right click. and create here the construction lines that we need to finish the auxiliary view. Now we're ready to go back to the objects layer and start to draw with the line command the rest of this view. Just a couple more lines here in the top view, one here and one smaller one here. This is the top view and the front view and the auxiliary view representing this angled piece or face here. Now we can freeze the construction layer and make the dimension layer current and now we're ready to finish this assignment with the dimensions if we have the dimension layer current we can click on linear and then click these two corners on the left side and we'll see that the scale and the precision needs to be changed so we can type in D, the letter D, and enter. Pick the Modify button. Under Precision, we can change the precision to two zeros to the right of the decimal. I'm also noticing that the .75 doesn't have a zero in front of it, and the default is to have 0 0.75, like this one in the preview. So under Zero Suppression, in the primary units tab, put a check mark in leading so that that leading zero is suppressed or off. Also, let's go to the fit tab and we'll just change the overall scale to something like 0.8 so that it's a little bit smaller to match what they have in the book. We'll pick OK and close. It looks pretty good. So we can use linear to establish our 0.75 and when you line up a dimension 
you can go over to an existing dimension arrowhead and click so that you know that they're both lined up and you're not just kind of fudging or eyeballing it there and now we have uh, let's go ahead and finish our linear we have um, one that goes from the top to the bottom over here and again I can line it up with the dimension that I already placed in the top view and just as a side note when you start the linear option if you press enter it will ask you to select the object to dimension if you have an object like this you can select it and it'll automatically pick up the endpoints for you and then you just pull your mouse down and click for a location so that would be start the linear command and then press enter so that you can select the object to dimension if we'd like this to line up we can pull your mouse up all the way to the top and click here so that you have the dimensions lined up over here we can use the aligned dimension to create these point two dimensions so uh, aligned click here click here pull your mouse up and click and then repeat the aligned so that you can place your dimension here I'm noticing right away that these dimensions are kind of conflicting so I need to use my grips to make these 0.75s a little bit tighter move them so that these dimensions aren't um, overlapping each other same thing here I think I'll use grips to then bring this point two over here and the same with this point two I'll just bring them both over so that they're not hitting the other dimensions and now we have a angular dimensions angular dimensions we have a 30 degree here and a 30 degree here a 90 degree here and a 90 degrees here and then one more 30 right here to make these 30 degree angular dimensions look like what's in the book you can select all three of these and then right click and pick properties and in the properties palette you can click on these arrows that are in the title of each one of these sections and under fit where it says dim line forced turn that from off to on and when you turn that on it forces a line there between the two lines that make up the angle you can use your escape key to get rid of those grips and then the last thing would be to add your title you can use multi-line text and just click a point pull your mouse across click another point use cap locks on and type in assignment whatever the assignment number is for you maybe it's 10 and then auxiliary views press enter and type in your name then hold your left mouse button down and drag your mouse across to assignment 10 auxiliary views and pick the U up here for underline and then click inside the AutoCAD screen and you have your title since you're here if you're creating your portfolio you can press print screen and it'll take this image and put it in the clipboard so that you can go into a PowerPoint or whatever you're using you for, for your portfolio and paste it as a an image into that uh, presentation